Primordial Radio. Welcome back to Primordial Radio. My name is Pete Bailey. Today, delighted to be joined by Charlie Simpson, busted fight star, and so much more, dude. How are you doing? How are you, mate? Good to speak to you. Great to speak to you. And I was thinking of our last encounter. It's been a long, long time. I had to go back into ancient history. So I first sort of crossed paths with you, and you you won't remember this whatsoever, but um, uh, certainly not crossing paths, but uh, maybe the gigs. Now, I was just starting out in the in the in the music industry i was uh, sort of learning the ropes at a live music venue called central station in wrexham doing oh, yeah. crewing and sound engineering uh, and so that was the last time that we sort of really crossed paths and it was um in about 2008 <laughs> i was wow. like good lord and i look back at those gigs with such fondness and I think to myself wow fight star playing in those small venues but uh, you know h- how do you look back at those days Man, I love those days. You know, I, I remember Rexton Central Station well. It was a really good, um, really good venue. I think the first time we played there was with a band called Your Code Never Is Milo. Do you remember them? Oh, I think that might have been just before my time, actually, because okay, it was on the so. second gig that I got to okay, uh, know you at okay. Central. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no. So we, we, I think, yeah, well, I think maybe we even supported them in like 2006, and then we headlined there. I think 2008. You're right. Um, and uh, yeah, man, we just had a lot of fun um, playing those kind of shows. And, um, you know, I feel like we really cut our teeth like that. And, and, um, they just, there was just a real energy in the room, you know, like when you can have people crowd surfing and just like going nuts. So yeah, I love those kind of venues. There's a, there's a different feel, isn't there? There's a lot of talk at the moment about that Green Day show that's happening at the, at the ballroom. Uh, cause it's like, I think they're playing electric ballroom and, and actually a lot oh, of people they? was, yeah, 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 yeah. They're playing the ballroom. I didn't ballroom. know that. Yeah, it's, which I think is about a thousand cap. And and it's 96 quid a ticket, but actually a lot of people were saying, you know what, I'd rather pay 96 quid to see Green Day in a venue that small <laughs> versus yeah. an arena. And I kind of get it. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I feel like it's cool for us because we're the reverse of Green Day. Like we play those shows all the time and like to play an arena is huge for us. For Green Day, he probably gets bored playing arena, so he wants to play a small show. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I think it's, it's what you're, it's, it's what you're, it's what you're used to and what you're not used to. And I think, like for us, you know, we've obviously got this Wembley show coming up in uh, in March, and um, I just think it's going to be a real that'll be a real moment for us because we've never that's by far our biggest headline show, so we're, we're super pumped. But then, you know, I love I love festival shows. I love tiny little. I mean, even smaller than Wrexham. Like you know, we played shows like at the Water Rats in London, which is like two hundred, um, and. Uh, there's there's just a vibe. The, the thing the thing that you got to be careful of with the really small ones is that they, they have a good sound system. Because I think that's that's the only thing that you sort of that you have to. Um, to which deal with which you get below that two hundred cap mark, it's like it's just a vocal PA. Exactly. <laughs> All you hear is drums and vocals. Exactly. <laughs> it's basically just drums. Yes. I mean? um, so unless you're gonna you know use an electronic drum kit, I think it's just gonna be cymbals. Um, so yeah, no, but I I, I think that. Um, you, just, you, you definitely get different energies and you take different things away. You know, I love um, Brixton Academy is awesome. And um, that sort of, that, they're, they're the kind of venues I, I grew up watching bands in, you know, like the Cambridge Corn Exchange and um, that sort of 1500 to 2000 cap is, is a real sweet spot, I think. Oh, absolutely. Coco, one of my favorite venues. Yeah, Coco's fantastic. About, That's been redone, that. hasn't it? It has. I've not been to it since it's been redone, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm itching and dying to, uh, to get back. So I'm based in Manchester now, but yeah, uh, itching to get back. So we've got to talk about Fight Star then. So, uh, yeah, you me- mentioned the fact that you've got this Wembley show. It's going to be taking place 22nd of March uh, next year. Last time you played live was 2015. So was this just like, you know, uh, an itch that you had to scratch? And, and what was the thought as well, thinking, we're not just going to come, come back. Well, screw it, let's come back and do Wembley. Like, how, how does all of that come about after eight years? Um, sorry, yeah, the reason I just got off more drowned is because I had my son. I think I thought he was about to burst in. Um, oh, honestly, that's uh, fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> my cat's uh, usually scratching at the door. <laughs> We're yeah, water yeah, all yeah. here I, at Prime Audio. I think my wife's, I think my wife's <laughs> probably trying to call him back. Um, uh, but yeah, so, I mean, it basically came about, um, we'd be, we played our last show in, uh, did you say 2015? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then we basically, Al had his 40th um, birthday party, Um at the beginning of this year. And it's the first time we've really been in the same room together for, for quite a long time, maybe even a couple of years. And um, 
It was at his parents' house, and his parents basically have this barn in Northampton next to the house. And that's where Fight Star started. Like, we, he had this thing called the Bloom Room. He used to be in a band at school called Bloom, I think. And, and they basically set this room up with it says, um, you know, PA and stuff. And, like, it's such a special place for us because we used to spend so much of our time there just writing. Before the world, he really knew who Fight Star was or, you know, we just had that time to spend together writing music and most of Grand Education was written there. Um, and 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 so we that was a real sort of nostalgic day for us. And um, I feel like that subconsciously set the wheels in motion of us doing something together again. Because we did sort of joke about it, saying, you know, it's been 20 years, we should do something. Um, and then and then we sort of, you know, went our several ways again. And then my my agent rang me and said, we've had an offer for Five Sides Play Wembley. And I almost fell off my chair. I was like, I think you must have the wrong venue. Like, that doesn't mm. sound right. Um, and he said, no, I'm serious. Like, I think, you know, there's a real offer and... You know, they, they they think you can you can do it, and so I just rang the guys and was like, okay, this is crazy, but you know, we had this offer, and and we were just really taken aback by, it, you know, because as I say, we we we've played some amazing shows, and I know that we've we've managed luckily to um, sort of garner a very loyal fan base, and and a fan base that doesn't really go away, like it, it it's always in the background, you know. There's this one guy on Twitter who has this who has the uh, the handle Comeback FS. And he's over the last over the last uh, like five years, he's tweeted one thousand five hundred times. Wow! To, and to, he survived the changes of Twitter to stick with it as well. I know, I know, <laughs> I know. It was so crazy. I was just so pleased for this guy. Like when we announced yes. this show, because I was like, and then he changed it to Five Star Came Back, <laughs> <laughs> um, and I was just like, that kind of loyalty, you just isn't easy to. To, to find, you know, and, and and I feel so lucky that we have fans like that. And, and I see, you know, I, I I get asked almost daily when folks are going to do stuff again. So, you know, that's always going on in the, on the background. But I still, to be offered to do Wembley Arena was a real, you know, sit up moment. And um, and so I just, you know, I'm just really looking forward to really sharing the night with with those kind of fans, you know, who who have stuck by us this whole time. And you know, we have been on quite extended breaks, so. Uh, I think it's going to be a real special, special time. And has this set the wheels in motion for anything more on the fight star front, or is it just a case of let's do the Wembley show and see where we go from there? Yeah, I think I think there's a big difference between um, playing a show and doing new music because playing a show you can carve out the amount of time that is needed to rehearse for it, and you know it can all be done um, relatively easily. You know, bear in mind we all have we do have other things going on. Um, you know, we all have a lot of things, projects that we're involved in. So I think to to embark on a new album would 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 mean us all fo- saying that well, that's what we're going to focus on for the entire year. Or do you know what I mean? Like, I would the last Five Star album is my favorite album. Like, I, if we were going to do something again, I, I love that record. Like, it's I think it's I think it's um, one of the things I'm most proud of in my career. And I think that that if I'm going to go back and do another one then it has to be the same or better, do you know what I mean? Like, in my mind. So I feel like it's, it's just not a small undertaking, you know? It's, you know, I, I, you know, people think, oh, just, you know, people release new music all the time and with, with, with Spotify and stuff, it makes it easier to do. But I just think that there is an emotional connection to writing music that you need to be in the right headspace for. And I think that um, when the time is right, I'm sure we will do it. But I think for now, we, we just want to sort of focus on this show and, and sort of treat this in isolation, really. Mm. And it's not like you've been inactive as a musician. Obviously, I'm speaking to you as you're there in your studio today, but doing lots of solo stuff, collaborations. And of course, you know, you you you, you went back with Busted for, for quite a period. And I was wondering, what was that like? Was it was it sort of less pressure and more fun the second time around with Busted? Uh, yes, definitely. And the main reason for that is that we, we it's all on our terms now, you know. Like this last campaign we've done, we've... we've um, we went and re-recorded all the old songs and and sort of we got to work with some awesome bands, some bands that we love. And and I feel like the whole thing just feels very different to what it felt like back then when I was a 16-year-old kid, basically. Um, and, you know, obviously there were a lot of things going on at that time that were out of my control. And, like, you know, when it comes to... When you're on a major record company, um, you know, you, there's always going to be things that you, you know, you know the story, you know. And I, feel, and I feel like, I feel like now we are totally in control of our own destinies. And that makes a big difference, you know. Mm. Uh, 
So I definitely feel like this last tour, the, the 20, 20 year anniversary tour we did with Boston was, um, was the best tour we've done. And I, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. It was awesome. So, and, and what's cool is that I can now do a five star show and everyone is totally cool with that. Do you know what I mean? Cause like 20 years ago, that would have been a lot harder, but I think the music industry, the music industry has progressed to such a point where I feel like the tribal divides have come down a bit, you know, like you've got bring me the rise and doing a song with Ed Shear and you've got, um, you know, there's, there's just a lot more cross genre stuff going on. I think that is, there's a lot of things about the music, music industry that have changed that I don't like. And I think are, are negatives to what it used to be like, but I think one massive positive is that um, I guess it's because the streaming generation has, it, it's so playlist based that you have a lot of people just constantly listening to vastly different things all in one go. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I've always kind of thought of it as a bit of an analogy. Music used to be like food. You'd maybe pick up certain pieces of food, little bits here and there, whereas now it's water. It's ubiquitous. And the thought yes. of it not being there on tap all the time is alien to the generation that has been born with Spotify and all the streaming Absolutely services. right. I, that's true, man, yeah. Because obviously you needed to go to a shop to buy a CD and you needed a physical thing to put that CD in and listen to all the rest mm-hmm. of it. Now you're right, it's just it's a, continu- it's a continuous thing. Now. It is. And I, I, I kind of think as well, like, because when you first did fight Star in, in the rock world, there was definitely, you know, controversy and lots of gatekeeping and all of that yeah. sort of thing. I feel like if if it's if a similar sort of thing happened today, I'd, I feel like you'd have like, or somebody else would have sort of no uh, opposition to that or, very, I, what, or dude, minimal. I completely agree with you. And that's what's so funny. If I did fight Star now, I don't think that anyone would bat an eyelid. If I'd come out and done it now, do you know what I mean? So that, that just shows how much has changed in 20 years. Um, but, you know, it's, I mean, I, I, part of that story, a part of our story and sort of overcoming that back then is something that I am, you know, it's a big part of us. It's a big part of what brought us together as a band. And I'm immensely proud of it. You know, I think that a lot of people said that I wouldn't, it couldn't be done back then. And, you know, the fact that we managed to, to garner the audience that we did and have support from not only the rock press, but a lot of our peers, you know, other bands that we love taking us out on the road. And, you know, I, I just, it's, it's, I look back on those days and think, um, actually, we managed to triumph over adversity, you know. Mm-hmm, absolutely. And I feel like you're in a really, really unique position to get a totally different perspective when it comes to the world of the mainstream and the world of the rock. I speak to a lot of folks within the rock world, not so many from 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 the pop world, but the conversation is always centered around like, you know, rock, you know, and struggling to break out into the mainstream and I was, I was wondering if I could get your thoughts of like wh- what do you make of uh, rock music's relationship with the mainstream today because it feels like there's a little bit of a disconnect that has taken place between mainstream audiences and rock music today yeah okay so that's a really interesting question man and something we were talking about yesterday with the five star guys I think that rock music's relationship with the, with sort of the commercial realm has always been slightly strange because the whole idea of the, the, the reason people, um, I think feel, um, they feel drawn to rock music is that they don't have to, um, sort of, um, what's the word adhere to, to, to the, to the current trends. You know what I mean? Like the whole idea of, especially of metal music is that you are individualistic and you, and you can sort of, not have to follow the trends and you and, and 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 that's part of what makes the genre and what makes the identity of the fan but i think that what happened in 2005 was that rock became mainstream as in like mike m and and um you know fallout boy and that that was you know for that was pop music at the time like that it, that it literally was it was all over the radio um, and not just like, you know, you say all over the radio, not like rock stations, but it was, you no, know, like, heart capital, dude, like the yeah, really yeah. poppy stations. Yeah, yeah, it was like, it was A-list Radio 1 all the time. That's what they played. Um, you know, so I think that was um, slightly, a slightly new time for rock music because it sort of found its way you know, into the glare of the mainstream. Um, I think it's sort of slipped back now because I think electronic music very much took over and... Um, you know, so it sort of took a back step a bit. But the great thing about rock music is that it always has its fan base because it's it, because it exists outside the mainstream. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't depend. Like pop music depends on the mainstream because without the mainstream, you know, it doesn't really have a cult following outside of it. So um, 
I mean, it is the mainstream. So I feel like you, you just look at Download Festival. It, it will sell out every year, re- regardless of if a band headlining is on the radio or not. Do you know what I mean? Most of them aren't on the radio. So I feel like I feel like that's really awesome. And I feel like that's that's something that is so strong because not I think not every genre has that. Do you know what I mean? That absolute diehard fan base. Yeah, and I was saying on our weekly podcast that we do here on the session this week, a similar sort of thing where I was like, I think rock has got to such a sort of size now as a niche genre that we perhaps we don't even like rock. I think it's rock music and rock fans, we don't really need to even concern ourselves too much about trying to break into the mainstream. It's like, if it happens, that's kind of cool. But actually, yeah. we're doing we're doing just fine. We're doing okay on our own now. Yes, yes, I agree. And you know what? It's Everything is, is, is um, cyclical anyway. Like, I feel like guitars will make their return um, at some point. And it, you know, it, it's happened like that for the last 70 years. But um, yeah, it's, the, the, the weird thing is, it's, it's, the thing that I sort of wonder is, is, is Rock's relationship with streaming. Because I, I find that, hmm. I find that a lot of streaming is made, focused more around pop and dance and electronic music. And I don't, I don't know why that is. Um, maybe, I don't know. I, mean, I feel maybe like streaming's what... diminished the album format a bit. And I don't know if there's anything the streaming services can do to enhance an album listening experience online. But yeah. yeah, it feels like singles is definitely the order of the day. And it's it's harder to get people to be engaged with an album in yes. full now. Yes, and I, th- and I think, product. And as, as I said, I think that for me, that's one of the sad parts of the change, changing music industry. But there are, because, because that, as an artist, I like to build a body of work that is um, coherent and, and that sort of, it's as one, it's one piece, it's one picture that you're looking at. Whereas if you split it all apart and then just have different tracks going on different playlists, that's not really how, um, you know, I grew up to intend to make music. But, but then, but then on the flip side of it, there are so many positives because it means that now, you know, so I've, I've been, during the pandemic, I've built a recording studio. Like I can make music and then I have a direct, uh, resource to market, which I didn't have back then. Um, and it means that I'm connected to my fans in in a different way. And I think that when we first came out, you know, you had to be on a record company. You know, bands had a tough time. You had to be seen by the right person just to get a chance to release an album. And if you rub someone the wrong way, that was it, you know? Well, exactly. Yeah. 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 And, I think, yeah. Uh, and I feel like now um, you really can sort of forge your own path, um, which is fantastic. It is. You mentioned Download Festival. I was wondering, what were your thoughts on the announcement yesterday, if you saw it? Because it was... Uh, uh, Fall Out Boy, Event Sevenfold, and Queens of the Stone Age headliner. What's interesting is I feel like Download have sort of moved themselves into the position um, where they are the sort of bastion rock, you know, bastion of rock festival. Do you know what I mean? I think Reading's, but Reading sort of moved slightly more towards the centre. So um, you know, this year's the, the, the lineup just gone with Download was absolutely phenomenal. Um, so you know, hopefully that hopefully they'll they'll keep that going. I think they will. I think they will. Uh, dude, it has been such a pleasure to speak today and very much looking forward to the show in March of next year. Wembley Arena, 22nd of March. And who knows, you know, I, if the juices get flown, that new music will come. But yeah. we don't have new music at the moment. So I'd like to talk to you about uh, an, uh, an older track. And, um, you know, this was the song that kind of sort of switched me on to you guys. Because w- when I first heard this, I was sort of coming out of my metal elitism phase. I was maybe 17, 18 years old. And you know, I'd really got into bands like Slayer, Pantera, and you know, I was a hardened you know, metal fan. But, you know, things change and evolve over time. And, of course, I think maybe when I first came across Fightstar, I might have been one of those people that was skeptical because you came from the pop world. But yeah. uh, this track, Floods, was the one that sort of really made really? me turn my head and go like, That's this so is easy. I would actually, I- like, this is amazing. I'm being a dick. Like, oh, what that's so <laughs> you know, I wouldn't have thought that would be the song. That's really interesting. Yeah, I don't know what it was, uh, but when that came out, that was the one that sort of you know made me re- re- rethink, um, you know, my thoughts at the time. You know, very very young. But I was just wondering, like, you know, uh, well, how do, how do you look back on uh, the track Floods now, or you know, all these years later? Um, so Floods is a really interesting one because we wrote that in that barn I was telling you about, um, you know, in our house and. I was just, I'm not really a piano player. Like I sort of find my way around the piano. Um, so I remember just tinkering around for a while and, and writing that riff and really liking that. And then and that was very much just born out of the, you know, the situation of us being in a rehearsal room together. And, you know, 
a lot of people don't write that way anymore because of modern technology. But I think just being in a room and messing around, you, you can find some really cool stuff. Um, so we wrote that. And then I remember the, the, the label really loved it. So they wanted to make it a single. Um, and, and, but it's weird. Like, we, we, we rarely play it live because I, I'm, I don't really like playing piano on like live. Oh, bring but, it um, back, man. Bring it yeah, back. Yeah. A, few, a few people have said they want us to play it at Wembley, so I think we might have to. Well, um, longer set times, you know, big yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but, but you know, I, I, it's weird. Like, I feel like of all the songs we did, that sits outside Fight Star the most. It's almost like, it's almost like that sort of could have been another band. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, it, it's, it's, it's quite different to everything else we've done. Um, but saying that, um, you know, I do love it. I actually want to go listen to it now because I haven't heard it in ages. I was listening to it as I was getting ready for our chat today. So yeah, really? no, it was, it was great to go uh, trips down memory lane. Uh, Charlie, thank you so much for your time today. Best Mate, of luck with the Wembley you, show. And, uh, and it's been lovely to catch you up. Nice one. Primordial Radio.